Oh, um, oh sorry. Well, no, that's cool. I, if, if you do it, I'm going to run late. So, yeah. So, I grew up in Los Angeles uh, on a street called Texaco Avenue, which is on the south side of the city. Uh, Texaco Avenue actually comes off a more infamous south side street called Compton Avenue on uh, Compton's east side. And so, I grew up in a little bit of a sketchy neighborhood of, of Los Angeles. One of the things I remember the most, I loved the most, was when my mom used to enroll us in swimming lessons at the pool. And I remember, I, I loved watching the older kids, how they would tread water for 60 seconds or swim the length of the pool underwater without taking a breath. But one of the things I remember the most was how they would jump off the high dive. And uh, being a seven-year-old boy watching that, just amazed. And I don't know if it was the height of the dive or the way they, j they just jumped off without regard for it, but as a seven-year-old boy, I knew, man, I had to do that. And so when the day came when I finally climbed up to the top and inched my way out, I kind of had this strange thing happen to me, and psychologists have a term for, a term for it called rapid cognition. It's when everything around you kind of slows down, and the, the periphery blurs, and your senses heighten. And I remember standing there with my heart beating fast, and kind of looking over the edge, and seeing the, the wind blow ripples across the water, and just going, wow. It's almost like the, the world stood still. There's an expression in mathematics uh, for a logistical function. It's called a sigmoid curve. It's called sigmoid after the Greek word meaning looks like an S, because it looks like an S. And so the sigmoid curve has actually been applied to a lot of areas outside of mathematics. Uh, businesses use it to predict and to plan product cycles. Financial industries use it to uh, navigate economic climates. Uh, marketers use it to explain why their latest strategy hasn't taken off. I mean, it's become really quite useful. And so the reason why the sigmoid curve works is this. Most people, somewhere they're thinking, uh, tend to think that life is fairly linear. It, it's an x-axis and a y-axis with a straight line coming out at a 45 degree angle. One input equals one output, two inputs equals two outputs, and etc. The fact is that that's simply not the case. And uh, The second law of thermodynamics states that everything tends towards entropy or disorder. And so the natural state of the universe is one of disorder or chaos. And so we've come to have these chaos theories that help explain why one doesn't equal one, but one input equals a quarter of an output, or, or three inputs equals 18 outputs. And so the S-curve comes along to help make uh, sense of all this. Now, the way the S-curve works is the initial phases of building are a base phase. It's uh, uh, market saturation. Growth here isn't quite uh, linear, and it's oftentimes slow. And then there's a growth phase. It's hyperbolic. It's exponential. It's gaining market share, uh, followed by a peak. Um, big business, industry leader, market dominance, and then finally a plateau and a peak and a, and a decline, a peak plateau and a decline of the curve. The innovation can't support the curve anymore. Now, what's cool about the S-curve is it's the story of Google, it's the story of Apple, it's the story of the American economy, it's the story of the American automotive industry, it's the story of the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire. It's really a picture of change, and there's two points to it. Change brings about growth, increase, profit, but eventually that change peaks, plateaus, and begins to decline. Now, the beauty of the S-curve is this. The secret to constant growth is you have to create a new curve before the first one peaks and plateaus. And so, somewhat counterintuitive, and right before the peak of the curve, you have to make a decision to leave the cycle and start something new. Now, it's somewhat counterintuitive because all the, the, the signs at point A is, it's, it's good, we're growing, things are great, why change, why mess this up? But you've decided to leave the cycle because you've decided to leave what's working to take a chance on what you believe is the future. And so it creates this kind of a hollow space that we technically refer to as funky land. And uh, it's just because there's a lot of questions there. I mean, you've left what was working to take a chance on what you believe is the future. And so real success for your organization, for your company, for you personally, comes when you can begin to sling a bunch of these S-curves together. Now, uh, at the end of the day, the first curve, the beauty of this is that it, it surpasses the height of, of the original curve, the second curve, and, and, and goes on even farther. And so, um, going back, I think that life tends towards typical. I think life can tend towards ordinary. I think at the end of the day, uh, I don't want to be the one always hoping, always wishing, always thinking, always envisioning. I want to be the one that's pushing, growing, changing, stretching. And so I think as the universe tends towards disorder, I think that life can tend towards typical. And I think that we can all look back on our life and see S-curves and see periods where uh, we were growing and things were thriving and it was great and exciting, but I think we can all look back and see periods where we hit the peak and we begin to, uh, to decline. My thing to you tonight is be intentional about the S-curves in your life and where you jump off in the cycles you create. And I'll just close with this. I was asked a great question one time. It said, 
do you want the rest of your life to look like your last six months? If you do, congratulations. If you don't, and uh, I think a lot of us are standing on the edge of things all the time. Opportunities, change, uh, standing on the edge of a high dive, whatever it is. And my advice to you tonight is to just jump. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.